hello and welcome to Stitching Stories episode three. Thank you so much if you're returning and welcome if you've just found me. So in case you don't know me, my name is Angela and I'm a textile artist, I make kits and I love teaching as well. So you might have seen me at some of the shows teaching, you might have bought some of my kits because I specialise in counter stitching. I do an awful lot and what I've missed during this pandemic is just meeting people so I decided to do this podcast as a way of connecting with you really so when I've had comments and questions it's really given me a thrill that, that you're watching them so welcome everybody so welcome to my virtual online home where I'm going to chat to you about my stitching about my knitting and really whatever else I get up to as well and always at the end, I'm going to try and do a little mini tutorial or give you some tips. So if you have any ideas about what you would like a little tutorial or some tips on, just let me know. At the end today, I'm going to talk about all the different marking pens that you could use for a project. Well, maybe not all of them because there are quite a few now, but I'm going to give you hints and tips to choosing erasable marking pens for your work. But that will be right at the very end. I do hope that you enjoyed my studio tour last time and also my little mini trip to Devon because I know there's lots of people watching this from either different parts of the UK or from around the world. So I thought it'd be quite interesting, you know, if, if I go to different places just to show you a little snippet about what that area looks like. So we were really lucky to get that little mini break in Devon. One thing that I don't think I said last time when I talked about the studio tour and if you haven't watched my studio tour and you want to see more about this space where I am today pop back to episode two because you can watch it there but what I didn't say was that my studio is in a complex a converted farm a converted barn complex on a farm just outside the town of Spalding in Lincolnshire and Spalding was known for tulip growing many years ago and in fact there is an area called South Holland so you might have heard of it but there's not just my studio here there's eight studios and there are ceramicists there are potters there's stained glass mosaic jewelry making illustration there's there's so much going on it's really nice to connect with different makers and, and different designers to do things really a few years ago I actually did did some workshops and it, it's quite nice when we try a different medium as well that we're not used to working in and I've had my coffee this morning in um, a mug I love this it's got a really lovely handle and this is made by Fiona the potter on site and she's known as hopscotch pottery and occasionally we do have studio open days so this is one of my favorite studio mugs at the moment and I'm trying to think I think it was about six or seven years ago perhaps, maybe five, I really can't remember, that I did a full day workshop with Fiona, the mosaic artist, and I knew I wanted to do something for outside my studio here. I don't think I've shown you this. You might have seen it, um, the mosaic from a distance, um, in the opening titles when I wheel round to the door, but I wanted to do an old Singer sewing machine, and I knew I wanted it to be outside the studio. So I had all her advice on making that. And I'm just going to show, put some photos in here of that Singer sewing machine, which is a mosaic, just so you can see what I did on the workshop. had fun doing that and it was really nice to work in a different media and but it's quite strange working in tiles working in 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 hard resources that, that don't bend and twist like yarn or fabric but it was a really fun day doing that so I have been doing quite a lot of stitching this month some I can't show you some I can a lot of my stitching has been with workshop samples either for groups or I'm preparing to launch some new Zoom workshops in hopefully by the end of July. I've also been doing some stitching for Stitching Stories 3 as well. And if you've not heard of Stitching Stories, I think I might have complicated things by calling my vlog Stitching Stories. But I also started last year to write a journal, a, a 
twice a year journal really with projects and things like that in there so it's, so it's multiple patterns you can if, if you've never seen this before you can see i have a flavor of just what's on the back this one contained tulip dyeing instructions and camphor work and, and things like that so i've been working on the autumn issues this was the autumn winter issue really so lots of stitching has been around that and i'm also designing for the spring 2022 issue as well so again, I see these as an extension of my teaching, so you can all share patterns. And I'm hoping to have a gallery section at the end of Stitching Stories 3, so you can see what other people have been doing. So well, I'm going to show you some spoilers now. So if you are a subscriber and you have subscribed to the autumn issue back in the spring, you might want to look away if you don't want to know what, what's coming up. But one of the things I like are Dala horses, and you can see mine on, on the shelf here, which um, is just, if I move the basket a minute, they're just sitting on the shelf there. And I've liked these for years, so I've used that as a bit of inspiration. And it's quite interesting that I put these on my Facebook page, which is Angela Damon, textile artist. And I said, do you like the white stitching on red? Or do you prefer the red stitching on white? And do you know there's a bit of thread on that one? And it was about 50-50, so it's probably a good idea this is going as a pattern, not a kit. I'll hold them both together there so you can see. Oops. So this, this pattern will be in the journal coming out in the autumn. And this isn't camphor, this is more embroidery than camphor, but it's the same rhythmic rocking of the needle. And one thing I'm going to be doing in that book is showing you how you can have one pattern and you can use that one pattern for different techniques. And there's going to be a lot of wool applique in that issue. So I've got all this lovely wool felt that is just about to be put through my die cutting machine to be turned into wool pennies. So I'll be showing you this, this project, but I love all these colours together. So that, that's another project to go. With these, I, I just like them because sometimes, I don't know about you, but we all need a small project, don't we? Something that we can stitch in an evening or something which is a quick fix, really. You have all your projects, don't you, that are going to take you a long time and you know that. But sometimes if you can sneak in a smaller one, you, you just get that, oh, I finished it, that sense of accomplishment. So these are both going in Stitching Stories 3. And this one is as well, which is, um, a starling design and I've got bits of thread on this one I'm just moving them all because I hadn't realized it's got quite so many loose ends in it and there's a needle in it as well and I think those people that know me know there's always a needle in my work and I try really hard not to lose them so this one isn't quite finished it's going to the framers on Monday so it needs to be which is in two days time but this is based on a starling and this is a bigger design from the book. This design is about six inches by 12 inches. So if I hold it like that a minute and the blue is the tacking, what I've used is the metallic black here and I'm going to hold it very close to the camera to see if it you can see it, but I'm not, I'm not sure. So if I just do that, oh yeah, you can, if it focuses, I think you can just about see that twinkle, can't you? So where you've got that blue flash, that red flash, that's just a little pop of metallic thread there. So that is a starling. And if I open it up, he's sitting on a fence looking at his flock here, his murmuration here. So the full pattern for this is going to be, as I say, in the stitching stories in the autumn. But I just wanted to show you just little snippets of, of what's going into it. So I'm really pleased with this and I will hopefully show you, I might show you this when it's completed because it will be completed for next month. I've been working on some commissions that I can't show you and it seems that sometimes when I'm doing lots of work stitching as it were, I'm a lot more, I'm needing my knitting a lot more because my knitting is more relaxing for me. So stitching is, is work or often is work. It's not always because I've been working on a quilt as a, that I'm gifting to somebody 
but that had a major rethink so that's had a little bit of unpicking which is why I've not got it in the studio with me today but hopefully I will show you that one soon because I, I work big and I work small so that's pretty much all of the stitching that I've been doing this month but I have been doing an you know quite a bit of knitting because sometimes with knitting it's my no thinking thing because if I'm stitching something like this but even if it's for pleasure my head can't stop thinking about the stitches the instructions what I would write about it it's like I can't switch off that that teacher mode inside me or that writing instructions mode inside me because I'm also doing a block of the month which is birds and I know some of the ladies are watching this so I can't divulge too much but I've been finishing off the bird for December as well again that's something I can't show you yet anyway because all of these birds will be going into a book in the at the start of next year hopefully we'll see about that so knitting I've done quite a bit of knitting this month because knitting is, is I said it is my go-to and perhaps the thing I've managed to do that I'm really excited about is that I've managed to block my waiting for the rain shawl, which, if you remember, is this one here. Get it the right way around. And blocking it has really opened up all of these short row lace sections. And I'm going to put some photos of it blocking in here. So it has made such a difference. I actually found the tag because this is indigo dyed yarn. It's so lovely and the fabric feels so nice. But when I did block it, it's nearly 150 inches long. So it took virtually two six foot tables side by side to do the blocking um, because it ended up being so long. But the yarn was by Lindsay, who is the border tart. So it's hand dyed by her and it was on her sock base. It's on her sparkle sock base which is 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon and 5% stellina. So it was just really lovely. And now, of course, I can wear it and I can take it to Festival of Quilts with me because I do like something that is really cosy and wraps around me. I would show you it on, but it's really hot in the studio today, so I'm not going to do that. So what I should say, though, is one thing that really helped me because I can't stretch too far is I used um, some blocking wires, some knitting blocking wires, which are in this tin. And I've never used knitting blocking wires before, and it really made a difference. If I open the tin, I think they were going to ping out like um, like a spiral would, you know, like a if you have a, a spring. So I don't think I put them away very well. But with these, you thread them through your garment or your shawl, and then you use the T-pins to peg them out, and it holds it in place. So for me, with, with not that much reach, these were, these work really, really well. And what I need to do now is block this one, which is the um, is it, um, Antarctic shawl. Again, this is a paid for shawl, paid for pattern on Ravelry, but I can't remember who who did the pattern, but I'll put it down below. But this one was done on a merino silk blend, which was by Lucy Locketland. So this is going to be the next one that I'm going to block. But because I finished both of them, I did decide that I was going to put something else on. I should also say I've got here and they're all tangled through the, they're all tangled on the shawl now, which I just need to untangle. There we go. I actually finished these. So it looks like I finished a lot, but I, I don't think I have. I think they've gone over a couple of weeks. So these were the turmeric dyed socks, the little shorty socks for me. So I can now actually wear them. And I'm really pleased with the dyeing of these because this was turmeric root. And like I said before, when I put the root in and when I put the yarn in, I didn't move it. So I've got these different dark areas and lighter areas. And I was hoping that would work. And actually it worked really well. So I was really pleased about that. So they can go on my feet now. A few weeks ago, maybe a month ago, I gifted some fleece to my lovely friend who spins. She's she's on Instagram. She's at Jackie Quilter on Instagram because she does a lot of spinning. And it was this turquoisey stuff. And I've had this in my stash for years. I think I bought it for wet felting. I'm really not sure. 
and I think it's a merino blend, but again, I'm not sure. So, so this was the colour of the unspun fleece. And then she gifted me these that she has spun and plied. I'm going to bring them closer to the camera because the colours are amazing. I don't know if you can see those. It's much more greeny in real life. It's coming, looking a bit turquoisey on the camera. So I'm thrilled with these and I just want the perfect project for them. So that, that's a project for the future. But one thing I have started again with my knitting, because sometimes I, I like to do something every morning before I get up, is I just started, decided to start the habitation throw. And this is designed for to work with advent minis. So last year for the first time I got an advent, um, a yarn advent calendar. So every day up to the 25th of December, you got a 10 gram skein of yarn. And it didn't sound a lot to me, but I'm and I'm surprised at how much it's knitting up with. So this habitation throw, I'm gonna lose the ball in a minute, is designed for that. So it's going to be knitted with 25 colours, 25 skeins. And this is again is a paid for pattern on Ravelry and it's by Helen Stewart. And I started this on the 1st of June. I think it's supposed to be designed for you knitting up one skein a day leading up to Advent if you have the time in December to do it. But this is what I've been doing and it's actually coming up really beautiful and quite big as well. So what we've got is this. Now, all of these colours are based on birds. So this one here, this one is a swallow. You've got so many different ones. This one was a mute swan. This one's a woodpecker. This one was a turtle dove. So we started down here and what I've done is this was a five gram. So I'm going to start with this and I'm going to theoretically end with this as well. So it's a really lovely pattern, just got eyelet rows in it, and it's got this lovely eye cord edge, which I think is really beautiful. So you knit up in a triangle and then you start to decrease back on yourself. So you can see here that I've started that now. So I've done all my increases and now I'm starting my decreases here. What I keep forgetting to do is not count my stitches on my right side rows and I keep having to in pull some back. It is a really simple pattern. I just need to get my head around the fact that I'm decreasing now and not increasing. Really simple thing to do, but I've been so tired I've not actually managed to do it. So that's it. I'm not sure how much more progress I'm going to make on this in July because I will have, well, I'm starting to do lots of preparation for Festival of Quilts, which is still um, going to happen and I'm teaching lots of workshops there so if you are on any of my workshops it would be lovely to see you. The workshop spaces are much bigger this year and I believe that there's going to be one person to a table if the two metre rules still apply so it's all going to be really safe. So what you can't see is sort of over that way there are baskets full of shibori kits, gosh I'm looking, um, hair kits, swallow kits, the tables are just full of baskets of kits. There are 32 jars over there with mordanted fabric in, ready for the natural dyeing workshops. It's it's all absolutely full. And in, I think in about four weeks, I have some people coming back to the studio to do a natural dyeing workshop. And that actually will be the first time we've had people in here since I think February 2020, I think. I'm pretty sure it's that. So these are lovely people who have really patiently waited just over a year and fingers crossed we'll, you know, we'll be meeting up in a few weeks to do some dyeing. And I've loved this and this is sock yarn and I have an idea, I have a plan that I'm going to knit up my own set of minis just all in natural dyes. Because if you've done any natural dyeing, you will know that no matter what you put with it, all the colours go. It doesn't matter if you have dark colours, light colours. So I, I just have a mind that I'm going to start to collect some skeins, some, make up some mini skeins and put some with cochineal and put some with 
I don't know, Madaru, Logwood, all of those different things and do another one of these all in natural colours. But I will show you this when it's finished and I'm just going to put it on that table for the moment. So June for me has been quite a busy month, but I think July is going to be even busier because of Festival of Quilts and just before Festival of Quilts, I'm going to be going up to the Lake District. But one thing I just want to show you is my beautiful new basket here because I've been thinking about Festival of Quilts and I'm not going to have much help this year. And I was thinking about carrying things. Now, sometimes if I put things, if I put heavy things on the back of my chair, it tips me back. And also what shows, I often pull a trolley. It's a sewing machine trolley on four wheels and I can tow it with big clips on the back of my chair. So I don't want to put anything else on the back of my chair. So I contacted Maggie at the African fabric shop about some of her baskets. And this is one of them. This is the one I bought. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this indigo weave fabric, this indigo strip, and I'm going to connect it to one side of the basket and then it's going to go all the way under my legs and back to here. And I'm hoping that that will actually be firm enough to stay on my legs when I'm whizzing round. So, and also for teaching, so I can make sure that I've got all my own scissors with me and things like that. So really pleased with this. And I just wanted a lovely, bright, colourful one. And it's got my favourite lime green here. So I think that's going to be wonderful. But it's a job to do, but it will be done. So... If you do see this strange lady whizzing past you with a basket on her knee at Festival of Quilts, it's me, so stop me and say hello. What I started to tell you about was hopefully the, I think it's the second week in, or third, I think it's the second week in July, I'm hopefully still going sailing, going on a catamaran. So catamaran sailing on Lake Windermere in the Lake District, which if it goes ahead, it's going to be absolutely wonderful. And if it does go ahead, I'll try and take some footage to share with you. So hopefully that will happen. And hopefully if I do get that, I will show, show you that before July and um, before the end of July. I'm not sure if I will manage a vlog by the end of July because Festival of Quilts is the end of July. But I will definitely post one in August. So thank you so much for watching. Remember, leave any comments, leave any questions below. And my little tips about choosing marking pens for your work or erasable pens for your work is coming up next. So I'll see you in July. Bye. One of the questions that I'm asked the most, either when I teach online, when I teach face to face, if I teach at shows, is about marking pens. And which marking pen do I recommend? And I've got a whole range here, which is from, you've got some water soluble ones, you've got a white colouring pencil, a HB pencil. You've got a friction marker here. Now I never use those and I'll explain why later. And this one on the end here is a clover one, which is called a, it's a clover white marking pen and this is for marking dark fabrics with. There are others as well. You can get pens that have chalk in them, you could use Taylor's chalk. There's a whole variety on the market. And really what you want to do is find out what suits you and what you're doing. Because obviously if you work primarily with dark fabrics, you're going to need one like this or a colouring pencil like this. So marking pens, erasable marking pens, really fall into several categories. You can have water soluble marking pens, which is what these are. These tend to be blue. I like the fact that clover give you a thick and a thin one. So this one here is like a handwriting pen. This one here is, is more like a felt tip pen, a Sharpie pen. Other brands like this one, it's more a thicker tip. But these come out with water. What you can sometimes get with these though is what I call a ghosting mark because these pens are designed to attach to dry fabric and come out with water. So if you do as I do, if you have a little brush and you, you remove the line as you go with water, sometimes this, this blue ink will just flow through the wet fibres and attach to a dry bit of fabric, nowhere near where you've marked. And if that happens, all you need to do is put all your work under water because that's what these pens are designed to do. And these are my, or these two are my, my go-to pens, but you can get lots of other 
brands of these pens, but I found that they, they work for me. And that's the key thing. But with these pens, the limitation is that you can't mark your work and then press your work with an iron because that sets this pen. So what's so important to do is whenever you have a new pen, and let's face it, at the shows, there's always the latest best pen, isn't there, that the manufacturers will have you want to buy. Read the instructions first, that's so important, and find out the limitations of the pens. So for any water-soluble pen, if it has heat on it, it will fix the pen. If you use one of these clover white ones, this comes out with heat. Water doesn't affect this, I've tried it, but this will only come out with heat. And that's for dark fabrics. But sometimes, you know, I have used, many years ago, I just used to use colouring pencils or a very soft pencil. Because sometimes if you're wanting a line that will have stitch over the top of it, like um, you, you could put a whip running stitch across your line, you could do a stem stitch across your line, you could do chain stitch across your line. And, and in that case, you don't see the line, do you? So that it matters less then that you can remove the mark. So an ordinary pencil, I've got ordinary pencils, an ordinary HB pencil out with um, a gentle wash. I've used a gentle rubber on the fabric. You can get them out, but test them. That's the key thing. Always test these pens on the edge of your fabric. And that way you won't experience any unseen side effects or anything bad. Because all I can guarantee you is that if you are doing something that's so precious to you, if it's a real heirloom quilt or embroidery, or if you're doing it for a gift and it has to be gifted in two days time, that's perhaps when the pens will play up and you won't get them out. So always test first. I know some people love these friction pens and I think they either love them or you hate them, these ones. But what these can do is these leave a mark on the fabric, even though you can't see it. Because of the disclaimer, I can't see, oh, Pilot, they're the manufacturer of these pens. And they actually have got a disclaimer on their website saying that these are not intended for fabric use. You can now buy pens that do come out with heat that are designed for fabric. But with these ones, I know a lot of you do use them. And if it works for you, that's fine. But I don't because these will come back. You can mark your fabric with this and you can then press it with an iron and I'm going to show you a close-up of some of these at the end of this but if that mark is left it will come back if you use these pens on dark fabric and you iron it out you get like a silvery line that you can still see and that will never go away because the ink becomes invisible it doesn't ever go off the fabric it stays on the fibers whereas all of the other pens I've shown you you can actually lift that ink or that pencil line off the fabric but this one always stays on your work so perhaps for most of you that won't be an issue but again test it on the end so i hope that little insight into some of the marking pens has been helpful for you but the biggest thing i can say and i'll say it again is just always test you probably in your pencil case have got so many of um, all of these different pens and you perhaps use them for different jobs, which is what I do, because I don't think there's any one marking pen really that does all the jobs, depending on the fabric you're on. So if you do have a pen that you think is wonderful that I've not mentioned, and there are so many more out there, just let me know so we can all share it and maybe we can try it. But happy stitching and I hope you found this useful.